What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Technician Podcast. Today, I've got the brother Alex Glenn with me. How are you, my man? I'm great, thank you, bro. Thanks. And we've got Oakley watching here. His son over there in front of us. Um, it's going to be a little director. Yeah, man. Look at him just chilling. Hopefully, he stays chilled, bro. Let's not <laughs> jinx him, man. Was that you as a kid? Terror. What chilled? Yeah, I was pretty chilled, man. Um, to be honest, but he's not always like this, bro. Mm. Don't let don't let his looks deceive you. <laughs> so maybe halfway through, we'll have him running around we'll playing see. with the cameras. We might have to take uh, a couple of takes. Yeah, cool. So first off, man, how you been? I've been great, bro. Yeah. I've been great, man. I've been very busy. Mm. Um, you know, I thought as a, as a as a footy player, we just never had time to do anything. But now that I've transitioned into the real world and not the real world, but like um, a day-to-day job, um, starting my own business, balancing family life on top, bro, I I don't get any free time. Mm. Like my only downtime is when the kids go to bed um, (laughs) and me and the missus will have a chat, um, catch up, and then literally I'll either go game or we'll put a movie on. So having transitioned from a... a a lifestyle where I guess your life sort of gets planned for you. How did you go actually coming to a lifestyle where you're now like, oh shit, I got to plan my own time? I was actually really good, okay. really good. Always um, been like the professional sort of thing. Oh, not really. I just think I just I I set myself up um, right in terms of what I was doing after football. Yep. Um, the transition was made easier, and then also you know I started my own business, which is Legacy Through Movement, um, in a gym environment. So I kind of had things implemented things that I was going to jump into Mm. Um, so for me I guess I've got three kids as well so you've kind of already got your routine down pat it was just filling in the blanks man and um, that's what I did with the Broncos and and Legacy so I know you know previous players have really struggled in terms of that because as a footy player we get told where to be what to wear uh, what to eat pretty much your 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 whole year is planned out Mm. Um, so, uh, I, when, before I started to transition to retirement, I asked all those players like Sammy and Koza and Hojo, what were some of the hardest things that you faced when retiring? And I just learned from that and, um, implemented my structures, bro, so that my transition was smooth. So knowing that was one of the things that they struggled with, was there anything else you picked up that they sort of said that you didn't expect? You were like, whoa, shit. Okay. I'm, um, I'm going ready for that. Nah, the biggest one was just um, being around the boys 24-7. Um, you know, we, we're in an environment where banter's like huge. Um, and the boys said that you you definitely miss that every single day, being around each other, being around your best mates. Because literally when you're in a footy environment, you're, you're around your teammates uh, more than you are your actual family, bro. Um, so they become your, your adoptive family. Um, and being around them every day, they missed it. So that's why I started my gym. I opened my gym to create um, a new team environment where I can be around my mates, where I can be around like-minded people. We can have banter. Um, we can grow uh, physically and mentally. And um, yeah, that's the purpose behind why I started what I did. I have to agree. I remember um, I was saying to you before, like who we used to play for at school and stuff. And mm-hmm. I remember Rob saying clear as day, he's like, boys make the most of this time because you'll always miss it for sure um if you don't give it everything oh right? for sure because it's like the those times where like we're, we're going to class but it's play to play football with the boys yep. or talk shit in the gym or yep. you know and that is such a big aspect and knowing how life is now outside of the football field too having those met those group of boys or men yep. to support you I think that's what why so many people probably struggle right oh for sure man and have you had a lot of the boys that you would have known that have finished now now that they don't have like what you've got, have you found that they struggle a little bit by themselves? Um, yeah, I think I think not so much struggle, but it's it's been a bit of a shock to the system for them. Mm. Um, you know, just recently Andrew McCulloch retired last year, um, and he's been lucky enough to go into a role at the Broncos where he's in game development. So it's good because he's surrounded by people like myself who. He, we're ex-teammates, also Jack Reed and, and Matt Gillette. So mm. I think for him, it's been good because he's surrounded by his mates um, at work. So that, that, that definitely helps, bro. Um, but yeah, man, I like going off what you said, I look back on the years that I had and some of the teammates that I had um, and we took it for granted, bro. 
we really took it for granted, man. Like Benji Marshall come to our club and he goes, man, you just don't realize the bond that you have amongst each other and how good your team actually is outside of footy. He goes, yeah. it's pretty rare. Because he went to like he went to Super League, he went to the Auckland Blues, he was at West Tigers for many years, mm. um, and he went to the Dragons as well. And he was just like, I've never seen anything like this. <laughs> and because I'm a one club man, I didn't know anything else. So like I've only been at the Broncos, and after I retired, um, and I thought about it, I was like, yeah, we really did take it for granted. It's so hard not to, though, right? Yeah, oh, 100%. You, know, like you, you get told these things, you're like, yeah, yeah, sweet, sweet. And then you, it's like retrospect or even hindsight, everyone's a genius at it, right? Yeah. You look back, but it's so cool that you took that as like, okay, I can create my own space anyway. Yeah. Because you've been around it for so long. Because mm. how, how many years? Were 13 you years, man, and professional, 14 Jeez. years total. Yeah. And I, like, I asked you that question of like how your body is, and you said it's like, it's all good, it's right? It's sweet. Yeah, right. It's sweet. I, I, th I think for me, man, like, um, I, I wasn't pushed out of the game, mm. so I wasn't, I wasn't forced into retirement through injuries, um, or the lack of skill. You know, I, I retired on my own terms, um, and one thing that I promised myself when I was coming through was that, um, I would never be that player that goes one year too late. Yeah. You know? I'd, I'd rather finish too t early or when the time's right. Um, because I, I don't know, I just didn't want to be that person that was just getting slammed in the media for, you know, he should have retired last year and all that stuff. Um, and then also too, when I retired, I think mentally I was just, I was done. I was tapped out. Um, if we go back a couple of years, this is when the pandemic hit the whole world and um, us, like everyone struggled. Um, but you know us as footy players we were um, pretty much on house arrest for two years and if you're if you're single or you you don't have kids it's it's all good you can game you can do whatever you want but for me as a dad you know proud father of three who's very hands-on um, I was restricted to taking my kids to school um, coaching my son's footy team, taking them to their sports things. Couldn't even go to the park, bro, and, and take my kids to play down the park, uh, let alone get away, uh, get takeaway coffee. Um, so, like, as small as those things sound, it was huge for me. Um, and it really broke me down mentally. And after two years of not being able to do that for my kids and missing out on so much time with them, I just, you know, I, I put them first, man. I achieved everything I wanted to achieve in the game apart from a premiership, which the Cowboys robbed from us. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to ask anything. <laughs> um, but like literally I, I looked on my career and I was like, you know what? I'm blessed to do what I did for so many years. I got to travel the world. I got to represent my country. I got to captain, um, you know, the Cook Islands. Um, playing World Cups with the, the likes of Sonny Bill and um, some of the best, man. Mm. And, you know, when I put that into terms of what I've achieved in my in my career, like, you know, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. To be fourth cap Broncos ever in history, like, that's something I never set out to do. And, yeah, man, I got to retire on my own terms. I got to retire as a, you know, a club captain. Um, and I got to fulfill my dream. So now it's for me to give back to my kids in the next generation. Wow. Just take that in, guys, for anyone listening to that, because to me, you've got to have something special and you need to be able to achieve something like that. Personally, from looking Thank at it from you. the outside in, um, I know you're not a big fan of being gassed up, but I'll do, I always <laughs> do it, bro. I'm like, because I was someone like that too. If anyone was backing me, I still have issues these days where I've got a partner. What's up, dude? <laughs> I've got a partner that's like so super like geez me up all the time ask like how was work how was everything yep. and I almost wasn't used to it yep. I was like why is someone backing me 100% yeah and it was like this That's insecurity cool. of like oh I don't, I don't know how to deal with this because it's not normal yeah um purely because I couldn't do it for myself yeah so is this something That's cool do you find that during that time you're struggling and stuff or anytime you have struggled have you had to lean on others to help you get through or were you able to lean on yourself nah I leaned on other yeah. others bro big time Big time. Um, there was a period in my life, it was actually my first year as captain. It was by far the hardest year of my life. Not because I was captain, um, but, you know, the fact that I missed 
predominantly the whole season through injuries, I was just riddled, bro. Mm. And anyone that, you know, that. truly followed my career, they they would have seen the most games that I would have missed a season would have been three max. You know, I was pretty consistent in terms of taking care of my body, um, being out on the field, doing my job, and that's what I pride myself on. And so the first year that I was got named, I was named captain, um, you know, our, our main trial leading into the season, I tore my hamstring. Um, which was a grade two. So I missed round one, which was at Suncorp to lead the boys out. And I was devastated, bro. Yeah. Um, but that's the way of life. And then um, I come back, I played one game. And in that game, one of the boys, um, his boot sliced my calf open. Oh, that's right. Yeah, bro, yeah. sliced my calf open. So I thought nothing of it. I just thought it was a tag. Um, kept playing and as we were playing I realised man I was losing strength in my leg and I looked down and that's when I could see my muscle hanging out and I grabbed my I grabbed my trainer and I was like bro I'm I'm gone here I was like I don't know what you can do I was like I need you to tape it up so it doesn't get infected there's a minute left I'll finish the, the half time and I'll see the doc and he goes no nah, no nah, you gotta come now and I was like no nah, nah, I'm staying so I got him to tape it up, managed to get through uh, the rest of the half and then went and seen the doc and he had a look at it and he goes, mate, you're going straight to hospital now. And I didn't realise the, the seriousness in it. Got infected, uh, eh? Oh, he said there's a high chance of it getting infected with the turf that we're on yeah. um, and all the fertiliser and that. He goes, if that gets infected, like you're going to have ongoing issues for the rest of your life. So yeah, bro, it was... Um, Literally, I had to jump in the shower, leave the stadium, went to private hospital, went straight into surgery, uh, and le like they thoroughly cleaned it out um, so that there was no dirt, nothing left in, and then they stitched it up, and then I was out for six weeks just because of that. Reason wow. being, for two weeks, I wasn't allowed to train at all because of sweat. If sweat got into oh, the into yeah. the scar again, I would have had to go back, get it cleaned out, set back. So I was out for six weeks, and then I come back from that, um, played the doggies, and then I got crusher tackled, tore my medial. So again, another six weeks, and it, it was just like that, just compound, 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 bro. Um, and it weird on my mental, my mental state, bad. Um, and then to deal with the ongoing. Um, you know, issues on the on the field. Like, um, I was going through personal dramas as well with my mum, you know, family family history. Um, and us Pacific Islanders, man, we, we always re respect our parents and stuff. And um, there, was, there was some bad fallout in terms of, you know, some hateful things mum was saying towards me. And, um, yeah, it really took a, a really, um, uh, I guess, um, what's the word? It took a heavy effect on myself. Like a toll on you. A yeah. big toll. A big toll. Because um, is your mum the Cook Island side? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And and mum raised us. You know, she raised me, my brother and sister. Um, and, you know, the things that I look like still to this day, I haven't spoken to mum in three years. And it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Mm. Um, but the way that I looked at it, um, you know, was I had to cut her out of my life in terms of take care of my own mental state and take care of my family. Um, and it's a hard thing to do, but I had to do it. Um, and yeah, bro, it's it's one of those things. Like I, I moved on. Um, and when you when you ask that question, that I have to lead on people, absolutely. Like I, I lent on, um, you know, my fiance Gemma heavily because she sees everything. Um, and then also my best mate Jordan Kahu. Um, him, he 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 was a person that I called and relied on big time. I could tell he's that type of dude, man, when we did the podcast here last time. Yep. Like he's just got this like real calming energy to him. And clearly you guys are tight, right? So yep. if you've got someone that you can just bro, I'm feeling like this, 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 this. Yeah. Get it off my chest. Like yep. I'm sure that helped you in that little bit just for him to listen, right? Oh, for sure, bro. Um, I think the biggest thing was like for them too, um, you know, I kinda started losing who I was. I started believing what was getting said about me. Um, and they reassured that I wasn't, you know, that's not who I am, you know, and that opened my eyes um, to, you know, um, my friendship and my and my networks, you know, the, my, my close circle, because, yeah, bro, I could have easily fallen off the wagon, man, and it's crazy, bro, like, there, there come a point, there was a game in that, that year, um, I come back and we we're playing the Warriors, man, and 
I don't know if you've seen this, but literally it was a game we should have won. We were coming last. Warriors were second last. Oh, yeah. And, I do remember you know, this. we, yeah. we should have won that game and we we were pretty much winning. And the Warriors ended up scoring with a couple of minutes to go. Uh, and it broke me. It broke me. It, was, to a it point. just takes that one last thing, hey? 100%, man. It broke me. And because this was my second game back, I think. And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to get our boys. We're going to turn our season around. This is going to be the starting point. And they, they ended up winning. And um, the full time whistle went. And out of nowhere, bro, I just started bawling out on national TV, just crying. And I, I couldn't control it, bro. I, just, I didn't know where it came from. And. Um, yeah, I got slammed by the media saying it was crocodile tears looking for sympathy and all this stuff and being the captain, you know, we're coming last. I was looking for everyone's uh, sympathy and that kind of hurt. But at the same time, they got to voice their own opinions, but no one knew what was going on in my life. Did anyone even ask? Time. Um, my mates, yeah. my mates did. Yeah. So Geordie was there and then it was lucky that Adam Blair and Cody Nicarima, who also are two of my, my best mates, they were in the opposition team. And they came over and embraced me and gave me a huge hug. And um, yeah, bro, it was um, a moment that, you know, really opened my eyes to talk about my problems. You know, I'm an, I'm an ambassador for, for living and their, their, their motto is it ain't weak to speak, right? And here I was giving everyone else um, tips and um, helping them in their personal journeys and, um you know, trying to be that motivation or, or that mentor for other people and my teammates. When that moment in time, I realized I wasn't actually listening to my own advice. I wasn't actually taking in my own mental well-being. Which I can make sense of considering the, like, what else you had to do in life. Mm. You know, did you have kids at the time as well? Yeah, bro. So you had kids, you had a missus, yep. friends to look after, you had a whole team to look after, you yep. had responsibilities galore. So oh, it's easy sure. to lose yourself. For sure, man. For sure. And yeah, bro, it just it just really um, opened my eyes to that self-care. Self-care is number one care. In order to take care of anyone else, you've got to look after yourself first. And I thought I was doing everything right. And then there comes a moment in time where everything just unleashes, bro. And it did for me. I'm glad you did. And it didn't matter where you were. Nah, and you know what? Like I, I tell that story proudly because I'm not embarrassed for what mm. happened. Um, and every time I've shared that story, everyone was like, "Whoa, I never knew what was going on in your life." And I think the message behind that, and and the lesson in that that area in my life was that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to go through your dramas. It's okay to let um, some steam off and have a cry if you need a cry. Um, I think for us as athletes, um, you know, we get put on this pedestal that we play the toughest game and that um, we can never um, express weakness. Mm. And for me, you know, um, although it happened on national TV, I, I see it as shining a light on that it ain't weak to speak and that we too are just human just like everyone else. We can be the strongest men in the world. You know, we can provide for our family, but we're just as human as everyone else. And then we do have feelings, we do have emotional attachment to a lot of things and um, we can share a bit of weakness. Mm. But when we surround ourselves with good people that allow us to do that, I think that's a beautiful thing in life. Man, first of all, thank you for sharing that. Ah, that's all good. Second of all, I hear you because like I've gone on this journey to do what I do now and um, it's almost like when we go against the grain and the, the more you shine, the more shadows you cast. Mm -hmm. So... I've had people, bro, like friends, I've lost friends, I've lost, you know, I've had people talk out and be like, oh, you're full of shit, this, this, and this. Yep. And it's like, um, you start to gain this knowledge of what really goes on when you just try to do better for yourself. Yep. Or like you, man, you're just trying to raise a family, you know, like yep. play this game you love, do your thing, and yet you're still getting shit on by people yep. you don't even know. So yep. I can't even imagine, is that something that you guys talk about a lot to support each other through some of the stuff you get put on you? Big like, time. There's always conversations like, oh, how's this dude? Like, yep. saying this, this, and this. Yeah, oh, for sure, man. Like, when, when you're living in, um, you know, professional sport, your your life in the media, um, you know, everything you do in life, you're critiqued and judged about. So, um, when you come across, you know, journalists that write a story or blasting some of our players and all that, you kind of, you want to check in with your players first and foremost because, 
I know firsthand, bro, you know, 70 to 80% of the stories are all fake. Yeah. They're just going off what he say, she say, and they'll publicize it um, to get the story out there to be the first person, regardless if it's true or not. And if it's false, they come back and they just say, I'm sorry. They don't write a story about it, you know what I mean? And I think for me, like, for me, being out of the scene now, being out of the professional um, arena, like, it's that's the biggest fresh air because now I don't have to deal with that crap, bro. Oh. I don't have to deal with it, man. And, like, they'll, I'll, I'll tell you right now, they'll be your best friend, but they'll be the first one to shoot you down whenever they get the chance because they're trying to make a living as well. And it's sad, bro. You know, it's sad. I, I had this conversation with um, uh, with the NRL, um, you know, well-being officer, uh, Paul Hep, and um, because I, I, I went publicly and, um, you know, I commented on one of the NRL's posts around mental health, and I said, this is, this is a hoax. Like, you're just literally doing this to tick the box yep. and say that you're providing mental health, but in, in all aspects, like, you don't support any of us players. You yeah. never have. I you say that you, that you do. That. But you don't, um, you know what I mean? And uh, the NRL reached out and said, are you okay? Like, do we need to have a chat? And I was like, I'd love to. I'd love to. I'm sweet. But the way that you treat our players is not okay. Um, so I had to sit down with Paul Hepp, man, and it was, it was actually a great chat um, because he understood where I was coming from. Um, and I basically said, like, instead of the NRL slamming our players when they stuff up, they should be there to protect us. Yeah. Um, we all make mistakes, right? Um, and we're just human like I was saying before and sometimes our players can stuff up you know and yet there, there should be some consequences but the way that we get put through the media uh, the media and we get kicked through the rub like it's crap it's crap and to even add to that having been in the system at a young age and knowing what it's like football is life bro 100 we don't even get to grow up at some point I know yeah. a lot of dudes that come through they don't even understand like how to actually act because they believe that their life is this. Yeah. They don't know all these other things and that's yep. not their fault. Yeah. 100%. A lot of the time is literally not their fault. And I'm not sitting here saying, oh, they're allowed to do this, this and this. Of course not. Like we're all adults, right? But yeah. Knowing what I do with coaching and everything, people are people because of other people. Yeah. Right. So we get raised by parents that believe a certain way. Maybe they're raised such and such to believe a certain thing. That's just how, that's all he knows. So he's For doing sure. the fucking best he can For with the sure. knowledge he has. 100%. And that's what people never take into account. Like all these couch coaches and stuff that rip into people. <laughs> it's like, man, you don't even know this kid. Yeah. What if he grew up with no parents? Yeah. And so now he's acting out because that's all he knows. For to sure. To get love and support, he has to play up. Yeah. And be an arrogant little whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's the only thing he knows. Yeah. And people just don't take into account. But then there's the other flip side where it's like, Oh, they're only saying that because that's all they know. Yeah. So it's like this yeah, brutal oh, bro, back and forth. Right? Yeah, you can never win. Yeah, you can can't. never win, man. You can't. You can never win, bro. But I'm glad you spoke up because how was that received by other people? I'm sure other people Mate, saw the post and they're like, yeah. The the support that I got from all the players, because obviously I was I was retired now. So I didn't... You're allowed to say I could what do I whatever I want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, and I'm not, I'm not here to slam the NRL because no. they do do good things. Yeah. But I just think... You know, from from a, a, a growth point in our game, we have an amazing talents that go out there and do a shitload of fucking community work, like a ton. And there's no, we don't do it for accolades. We go out there and we try and impact our community. We try and shine light. We try and help where we can. But you don't see the media posting that. You know what I mean? They will rather kick you to the curb. Um, and, you know, the comment that really stood out to me was that, Negative media sells papers. I understand that. It does. Okay? But how do we change that? And I said to Paul Hep, bro, we need to grab all our journalists and literally let them know that anyone that slams our players, like you're going to be banned from any future like conferences. You know what I mean? And that's, that's how you stand up to these fellas. Um, you know, these guys should be made accountable if they're publishing a story that is false. Um, they should just like we are we're made accountable whenever we stuff up mm -hmm. um, and the prime example was you know Nelson when he was in Bali he sticked up for Vunavalu um, you know f protecting themselves and someone you know broke a glass and came at him as if you're gonna well, I'll, I'll, we're advised to walk away from a situation 
You'd As if you're going to turn your back like on someone yeah. that's got a sharp object. Yeah. You know, you will never do that. No. And so he took matters into himself. Um, you know, he, he, he defended himself and his mate and he got himself them out safely. Now he got slammed and he, he got slammed with a fine and game suspension. And I said to the NRL, what message are you sending to the public that they can come and target us players and if we react, we get punished for it? You know what I mean? Bro, in that scenario... I would be checking on the other dude's mental health to pick a fight with someone that size. 100%. Why the hell is he trying to fight Nelson, bro, of all bro, people? 100%. <laughs> yes, but I, I hear what you're saying. It's yeah. like these things happen, right? And they just get dealt with the complete wrong way. Yeah, 100. But like I've heard Ice talk about it heaps with YKTR and knowing that, you know, the negative media and he wanted to change all that. Yeah. And you see, man, the positive stuff still gets out there. For sure. The positive it stuff, does. like what Scope and Willie were doing. Like, yeah. That's gun, like seeing there. Like yeah. Everyone loves that shit. Everyone loves it. So why it, can't bro. we focus on the positive? Yeah, 100%. And this, the thing I think is, it's an old story of like, oh, negative sales. Like, for well, sure. Let's switch it up. But no one no one wants to take that leap mm. and, you know, try and go against the grain. Yeah, it might take years down the track to realize that, hey, people love positive, more positive stories. But, hey, why, why not start now? You know, they talk about generational change. It takes six generations for you to implement change within your generation. Um, why can't we start that with the media right now? You know what I mean? You just nailed something on the head, bro. What I'm doing with this, I know why it's taking so long. It's supposed to. I said this to Aiden before. I was like, man, I know, my, I know what I've got with this. I know the conversations I'm having. They're so different to what other podcasters are doing. The podcasters that are getting... 500,000 downloads and stuff like this, right? But they're focusing on the surface level stuff. Yeah. Like I'm going deep, man, with most yep. of my convos. I still have fun and stuff, but I know that I'm changing the culture with every episode by having a deeper conversation. It's also not what's like flashy, right? Yep. So, um, but I can make sense of that. It's cool. Yep. Like I've been doing this for two years now and yep. I'm only just starting to sort of scratch the surface. Yeah. Um, but even just hearing you say that, it's even just backed me up even more I'm like okay yeah. I get to do this 100% it's fine like I remember how long it took to get to the Broncos man like yep. I played from five years old and then finally at 17 they're like yep cool let's go yep. so 100%. knowing that what Gary V says also it could be episode 999 mm -hmm. where it just blows up mm -hmm. and all of a sudden all that work you've put in it's there hell yeah bro mm. hell yeah I respect you my G yeah no you thank know, you for, for, for what you're doing um, and what you just said bro Nothing in life comes easy, right? And if it was easy, everyone else would be doing it. Yeah. Um, you look at the way social media is and all that, everyone's just doing things that are trending so they can get the likes, they can get the, you know, the follows and all that. But when you when you got a deeper purpose about what you do, it will come to light. And when it does, it's going to blow the fuck up. Oh, yeah, and it's even... It's hitting even harder because yesterday I had a conversation. I surround myself with really good people, like yeah. I was saying before. And I was just having, I've been having these moments lately where I'm like questioning my self worth again. It's an old shadow that's playing mm -hmm. out. And I was like, fuck, what is this? And I just I randomly had a friend just message me, be like, hey, Trav, call me. Yeah. So, ah, this is happening for a reason. Called her. She was like, I feel like you're losing who you are. True. And just that, the, just that statement, I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And I realized, I was like, oh, this is why what's been happening lately. Like, I've forgotten like who I actually am, what I like, what I enjoy. Yeah. I'm trying to be something else to try like get the likes and the follows and blow up and yeah. cuz I see other podcasters like I said before have this this and this. I'm like that one statement from a good friend who called me on my shit. Yeah. I was like, okay, let's reset. Let's remember why you're doing this. Yeah. And just enjoy it. Enjoy it. Like show that you're a gamer, show that you love wrestling, show that you like basketball, like you are you for a Bro. purpose. And there's so, only one you in the world, lad. Man, and it's crazy, right? So I don't know if you know Watini Wanga. Yeah, bro. Wow. So Wa, so I've become really good mates with him recently. Yeah. And Wa goes to me. I don't know if he wants anyone telling me this at all anyway. So it's like he sent me a video after the retreat he came to for our yep. heart-led warriors. Yeah. Bro, this video fucked me up. I was in tears. Eh? He just, yep. just the way he speaks, it's real calm and intentional. Yep. He's like, bro, I watched you on the weekend. And you're special. Like, you've got something. Like, you're meant to change this, this, and this. And he goes, I'm just waiting for you to realize it. Wow. And I was like, oh, man. Wow. So, clearly, it's it's all, like, as we say, these things, nothing's by coincidence. No. You meet people, things happen for a reason. Yep. Knowing all this and 
hearing those words from people like Wow, people like yourself, yeah. I'm like, okay, cool, let's go again. The reason I speak about this is I want to segue into your purpose and to why you did what you did up until this point. How the hell did you get into footy and where'd you grow up? Bro, I grew up in uh, a place called Beach Haven in Auckland. Um, and literally my family, um, we were rugby league through and through. So, you know, we come, we lived in a country that rugby was, was huge, but my family always loved rugby league. So ever since I was able to run, man, from nine months old, years old, I had, I had a footy in my hand. Um, and I started playing footy from the age of five, um, up until two years ago, man. And, um, it was in my blood, bro. My uncles all, all played, um, footy. Two of my uncles went um, into the Melbourne Storm back in the year. Um, the preseason with them. Never actually made it to first grade, but, you know, they were in the systems for a long time. Represented the Cook Islands. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think for me, my, my dream was to pass them and, ma- and make it to the top. Mm-hmm. Um, was I, did I have the belief that I was going to do it? Probably not. Because in my family, there was so many more of my cousins that were so much more talented than me um and you know my my cousin Patrick he was one of them bro he got he come over um from New Zealand lived with us and in two weeks he had a scholarship for TSS rugby yeah well which is huge anyone that knows TSS um college bro like they're they're a huge rugby private school and it pays like you got costs I think it's like 25 grand correct me if I'm wrong but it might be more than that a term so you're looking at That's nearly a hundred grand a year to go Jeez. to the school, um, and he he'd been over for two weeks. Um, I knew he was a he was a superstar, bro. And I let our um, our rugby coach at school know, and he was a Gold Coast rep coach. And um, he goes, "Oh, bring him along to this game. We're playing Japan." And my cousin came and played, and he got a hat trick carved up. <laughs> and after that, he got a full scholarship to TSS. Now, long story short, bro, he he didn't end up going because his mum took him back to Sydney. Um, which we, we were devastated about. Um, and then he ended up moving back to New Zealand and he um, he was playing rugby still, ended up having a bad tackle where he whacked his head on the ground and had a blood clot in his brain. Rugby what? career gone. What? Rugby career gone. How many players do we know of that could have been just like the greatest ever? Oh, for sure. Bro. And then there's injuries, family stuff. 100%, Fuck, man. That's like sad. there's so much talent, you know, out there. Is he one of the best players you've known that missed out? Big time, yeah, big gotcha. time, like by far. And I, I tell him to it to this day, man. He's like a brother to me, older brother to me. Um, we lived with each other for so long. Um, and yeah, bro, so like for me to reach the top was kind of a thing that I wanted to do for him too. Because out of our family, he was the one that was going to make it. Damn, that's you know so that I mean? adds more to your purpose in for a way. For sure, for sure. Did and something shift in you like to go to the next level when that all happened? Um, after high school. So I went through high school, always loved footy, played footy, played touch at a high level, went to nationals and that. And then um, after high school, I sat there. I left high school without any idea what I was going to do. What school were you at? Miami High School. Yeah, right. On a goalie. Yeah, yeah. nice. So I literally left. I was, a, I was the guy that, like, you know, tried to be cool, try and hang out with all my mates, did surfing, play sports, but never had any ambitions in terms of work. So when I left school, all my mates went into a trade. Some took over like their dad's businesses and that, and they were very successful in it. And I looked at myself and I went, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I'm 17 turning 18. I don't have a job. I live in that mum's house still. And I was just like, what am I doing, bro? And so like a light bulb just went off. I was at schoolies, believe it or not. And my group of mates that I was rooming with in our unit, they they were in preseason for the Burley Bears and all of them had to go to training and they're like, what are you going to do? And I was like, I don't know. What the fuck am I going to do? You know what I mean? I was sitting in an apartment by myself yeah. and so the coach um, who was picking them all up, he goes, come and train with us. Like, you don't have to do anything. Just come. At least you're not here by yourself. And I went, you know what? Sweet. So I rang my mom. I go, mom, I'm going to training. She goes, oh, what? Because I had three years off from footy then. Yeah, right. And she goes, I go, any chance you can drop my footy boots off? I might have a run. She goes, yeah, sweet. And then literally as soon as I had that first training session, I was around the boys, around the banter. I, um, you know, I fell in love with footy again. Um, I had a purpose in my life to be around the boys and play footy. And literally that was my light bulb moment. I went, you know what? I got nothing else going for me. I'm living off mum. I'm going to give this a red hot crack. I was playing Colts at the time. 
Um, and I knew Queensland Cup gets paid, so I went, stuff it, I'm going to give it a crack. So we had this uh, little, you know, a post session, Colts vs. Cup, uh, and the, the person I was marking up um, against was um, Capewell's brother. Yeah, right. Yeah, so Liam Capewell was the centre then, um, and Curdy Capewell that's at Bronx now, he, I didn't realise it was his brother until like two years ago. He goes, you took my brother's spot. And I was like, oh, this is <laughs> awkward, bro. I was like, what? Uh, so literally, I, I seized my moment, bro, when we played in that trial match and I was able, I got a phone call from the Queensland Cup coach, Jimmy Lenahan, um, who's at Titans now. And he goes, mate, I want you to come do preseason with us. And then long story short, ended up playing every game for Cup. I got signed from the, from the Bronx six months into Queensland Cup. Um, at what age? I was 19. Yeah, okay. 19. And I've been six months in the game. Um, and for me, why everyone says, why did you sign with the Broncos? Because I had multiple um, contracts from different clubs. And the reason why I chose them was because I'd only just come back to footy. So I wanted to go to a place where I could learn to be the best footy player that I could be. Yeah. And when you look at the, the caliber that the Broncos had, they pretty much had the whole Queensland side and Australian side. Darren Lockyer, Sam Thayde, Corey Parker, Justin Hodges, Petro Siversiva, Tony Carroll, like the, the list goes on. Mm. And I went, you know what? I may not get my opportunity there, but at least I'm going to learn to be a bloody good football player. And a good person. And I a know good the, person. That was one big thing when I was with them was a big focus on what type of person you are. Hell yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember, but would you have played with my mate Tyson Andrews? Yeah, bro. Yeah. He was in my 20s team. Yeah, and James Ackerman. Yeah. Ackers, so yep. they were my best mates. Wow, so I played. I played with them at school. Um, Tyson grew up with from like fourteen years Mate, old. We called him a pit bull. He was a <laughs> shave head, and he yeah. went a hundred miles proper an hour. Psycho, like, eh? Proper, didn't care about anyone. Yep. loved the fight. Yep, and yeah. bro, <laughs> what more do you want from your props, bro? Honestly, you know what I mean, just the best. So, just a bit of a backstory too with him, which I'm sure you saw. He's just such a sweetheart off the field, but yeah, bro. like best dude, best mate. We'll have you back. No, like he's easily. My most loyal friend. Yo. Ever. Like, he's the things he's done for me. That's wicked. Fuck. I used to live with him and his family to go to school. Um, Yeah, up the coast there. Because yep. I was from Woodford, a little country yep. town. And just, like, him and his mum and his brother's sister, like, they all just looked after me like I was family. And to know, just to be speaking of him right now, I'm so proud. That's cool. To know that I know him and he's, like, my best mate. That's cool. So... To know that you got to experience it with him too. Yeah, bro. Like, he, uh, he's a man. He's a man. And then he went on. So, I honestly believe he could have been at the level of, like, Jakey. Because he was at Manly yep. when Trebojevic was there. Yeah. And then his knees just cooked out. Yeah. You know, again, another, another player person, that just... Bro. Yeah, just the strength I've seen in him, man, and things he's done. And then players like Akers, bro, obviously, you know what, you know, unfortunately happened there, but... Um, yeah. Just yeah. some incredible players, man, that For just sure. come through that system too. Absolutely, man. And Absolutely, then bro. I could have been with you guys playing in that 20s team if my mental health wasn't so bad as a kid. Yeah. You know, like I was with, as I said before, with the boys like Josh Maguire, Andrew McCulloch, Ben Hunt, all the boys coming yep. through. I was in the system. And then at 17, this is why I was like making that face you were before, I decided to quit because I yep. couldn't handle the pressure. Yep. So I ended up moving home with my parents. Yeah. I'm living at home. Everyone else has got trades, getting jobs, going to uni. I'm like, well, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. A full identity crisis. Oh, bro. Hell yeah. Right? Hell so yeah. went through so many things to get to the point now. But that's my story, man. So to know yeah. your story could have gone a similar way. Yeah, for sure. But you had that moment where it's like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> this and, isn't happening. And literally, bro, like when, when I had that moment, when I got caught into Queensland Cup, I was 90 kilos at best. What did you play? Like low hundreds, eh? Yes, yeah, so I was 102. Yeah. 102. Yeah. Um, and I knew I was playing against men, bro. So I was like, man, I got to hit the gym. So I was in the gym every single day. Yep. Um, and instead of going out and partying like an 18, 19 year old would, um, I, I was at home getting my sleep and I was training Saturday, Sunday, trying to get an edge on my opposition mm -hmm. because I knew even though I made Queensland Cup, like this ain't the top. The same, the top. Like I, I still got dreams that I want to fulfill. Um, and then, yeah, when I signed my twenties contract, bro, the rest was history, man. I just, I had so much confidence in myself that I let no one step in the way of, you know, my future and what I wanted to achieve, bro. And um, yeah, man, it was, it was a journey that I say to a lot of kids that don't happen like that. 
but it came down to my three values which was um you know dedication hard work and sacrifice mm. my parents sacrificed a lot to get me to where i was so there was no way in hell i was going to let that opportunity go and then once i got there i knew hard work was going to keep me in the door talent will get you there hard work was going to keep you in the in the team in the systems and it just goes to show i now remember as well you would have played with my mate toddy murphy <laughs> yeah bro so murph was saying I, I, his words just came to my head he's like man um, Lex was one of the most professional players I've ever played with. So clearly, clearly you showed up every day and didn't fuck around. Like you were in the yeah. gym, you were on the field during like trials, whatever. It was like yeah. 110% every time. Oh, always, bro. Always. Mm. And shout so out that to was Toddy, bro. Thank you, brother. I appreciate <laughs> yeah. you, man. Bro, Murph was one of the most talented players I've Hell ever played yeah, with. Bro. Um, I, I think what held him back was everyone always judged him on his size, which yep. was shit because he was still strong as fuck. Like oh, hundred, he could dominate players, man. Hundred, and he could shot too, man. Yeah, yeah, he right. And just a good dude. And yeah, it's just knowing that there must have been so much politics still, even at that level. Yeah, because we go from Q Cup to NRL, like you yep. would know that level is just like oh, a, for a, sure, beyond and above, for sure. But your transition seemed to happen pretty smoothly. Yeah, but once you're in the system with those players, you were saying before. Yep. How was your experience then? Do you feel like you raised up because of who you were around? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So like my my first preseason around Lockie and Carmack and that, bro, I still remember going like, what am I doing here? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I've, yeah. I've only been back in the game for two years. I shouldn't be rubbing shoulders with these boys. And like they, because they, they were like idols in my eyes. And then here I am like just talking shit, man. You know, amongst them, the I was like, what the, what the hell's yeah. going on? And I remember I caught the, my first ball off Lockie because I was playing back row then. And I was like, we we're just at training. And I like, looked at the ball. I was like, Lockie just threw <laughs> that to me. Like, what the fuck? You just run off the field, put it in your you bag. You know what I mean? Like, I was yeah. just like, bro, this is nuts. But literally, it was, you know, I was watching all our players. Um, and like I said, they were the best of the best. And I was watching how they trained. I was watching how they prepped. And I was just a sponge soaking everything in i go you know what if that's what it takes to be at the best i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it so i came in hours earlier i did my preparation i made sure i was hydrated i was doing everything to a t because i knew you know even though i'm i'm here in the squad i don't have a position on the team it's not guaranteed it's not guaranteed bro um you know there's a lot of players that that are in you know top 30 and all that but sometimes some of the a lot of them don't even get to play one game for the club so again i seized my moment bro i was like you know what i'm not gonna let my family down i'm not gonna let my, myself down i'm gonna give it all if i don't succeed then i don't succeed um but literally i was just a person that loved to be there for the team and do whatever the team needed so I was doing extras after after training. I was doing extras for different positions in case I needed to be that utility player. And sure enough, my debut game, I was the utility off the bench. Mm -hmm. So I could cover anywhere. Um, and that was my moment, bro. And, you know, Ivan Hinjak was a coach. And, um, you know, he goes, I may need you to play hooker. I may need you to play center. Um, but I'll, I'll need you on the bench. I go, bro, whatever you need, I'm here. I'll do it. And everyone mocked me. They're like, oh, you know, you're just sucking up to the coach. I'm like, I don't give a crap, man. You know what I mean? I want to play first grade. And if I've got 14 on my back or if I've got six on my back, I don't care as long as I'm in the team. And that was my that. dedication, bro. I just dedicated myself to doing it and doing it every single day, bro. And, um, yeah, I, proud, I, I took pride in what I did. And to be honest, that's why I had a long career, I think. 100%. Because I took care of my body. Um, you know, my, my nutrition wasn't the best, but I made sure every other box I was ticking. Yeah. Polly's, we love how, how we <laughs> love our fast food, bro. And KFC is and it all KFC that, or Mac, oh, is it? Both. Yeah. Both. But if I had to choose one, KFC. KFC all day. KFC, bro. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, ma I made sure, you know, I was making sure I was ticking off all the boxes so that when I went into preparation in the game, there was no doubt in my mind I was able to do my job. Mm. Should I have been there that early? Probably not. But I made sure when I, I was out there on the field, I never let my teammates left and right on me down. Oh. I just gave it all, bro. Even though I knew I was stuffed, I just kept turning up, bro. And it was the best feeling in the world, man. Best feeling in the world. And now that's something that I implement in my life every single day. I was day. just about to say, I bet you map that across directly into just everyday living now. For sure. You just show up. For sure. you show. That's all you can do, man. Mm. That's all you can do. I'm not perfect, bro. 
I'm far from perfect. We all have our days, but, you know, I try and show up for my family. I try and show up for my kids. And I try and show up for, you know, um, my work colleagues at the Broncos and also my gym. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, you can only control what you can control. And that's just being there for everyone else, being there for your job and handling your role and your, your, your yeah. um, I guess, your aspect in life of what you need to do. 100%. And if you could take some of your, is there any moment during your time with the Broncos that sticks out where you're like, yeah, that's what I'll never forget? Um, I think, bro, this was a tip that Lockie gave me on my first game that I kept in the club. Um, again, I was way too young. I was 22, bro. Um, and it was my third year in the game and Lockie and all that were in origin and um, I rang him the night before the game because I was shitting bullets, bro. Like, I was freaking. We were playing Canberra Raiders at Suncorp Stadium and I was a captain at 22. I was like, what do I do, bro? I was living with Jordan Kahu at the time and I was like, bro, I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I've never been this nervous before. And so I picked up the phone and I rang Lockie. I go, sorry to ring you in origin camp, bro, but... I don't know how I'm meant to lead these boys tomorrow. And these words are, have been with me for the rest of my, my life, bro. He said, Lex, there's, you don't need to give this miraculous pump-up speech. You don't need to, um, you know, go around to every plan, tell them what their job is. All you need to do in order to lead the boys is lead through your actions. And he said that, and I, I literally sat there in it for like five, ten seconds, and I knew straight away what I had to do. Because, like I was just saying before, everything that I did in my weekly prep and my day-to-day, I nailed. And there was a reason why I was in the position that I am. And so all I had to do was go out there and do my job and lead for the boys through the way that I played the game. Um, and, the, and the boys will follow. And sure enough, that's what happened, bro. And now I try and implement that in my everyday life. You know, lead through your actions because everyone can talk. Mm. Everyone can have the gift of the gab and say the right things and jot down on a piece of paper what they will think their boss wants to hear. But your actions will always speak louder than your words. Damn, that's cool. And that's some really powerful advice coming from someone like that. You know, Man. you listen when Lockie speaks, right? right? So, In my opinion, everyone's got their goats. He was the goat in my eyes. Which is almost the perfect segue to go into the team we talked about before. I was saying to Alex before this is that a lot of people are asking me to ask him who's his favorite, like who who's his team, ultimate Broncos team of all time. And I actually had one written down here and he's actually agreed with 98% of the team. Mm-hmm. But we just changed Lockie to 5 eighth instead of Kevin Walters. And we put Carmichael at number one. Yeah. So it was like Carmichael at one, Takiri at two, Renouf at three, Hodges at four, Big Wendell at five, Lockie, Alfie, Webkey and Petra at front row. Kevin Ker- Walters still at hooker? Or do we have him on the bench? Uh, nah, Kerry Walters is still there. Yeah, yeah. Brad Thorne and Talis the second row. Tony Carroll, Corey Parker, Alex Glenn, Sam Thide, and I think it might have been Kevy, Kevy on, on the, the bench. bench. Yeah, 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 cool. Which yeah. I'm sure anyone hearing that, you're going to pretty much agree. There might be one or two players in there yeah. that you can switch up, but... Bro, you, you look at that you look at that class, man. You got Wendell and Lottie. Like if you see them in, in real life, they are huge, bro. And then and then um you got them as wingers doing your tough carries, like yeah. gun. Then you got Steve Ren, uh Renoff, who in my eyes he was one of my like my role models I looked up to, bro. Yeah. You know, the pill. Um and you got Hodjo who, you know, was one of the best centers in the game. Um, Carmichael by far one of my best fullbacks I ever played with yep. you know Billy Slater and oh no 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 <laughs> no, no, no don't touch don't touch it's all good um, <laughs> you know the reason why I say Carmichael was one of the best was he pretty much created or implemented the block play mm. you know like he ran that block play to a T and he had all the options off him where he could hit short he could hit long he could hit the gap himself or the, the way that he put a grubber behind the line was just next level, bro. Yeah. He he implemented that into the game in yep. terms of fullbacks. Um, and then the way that he positioned himself on the try line, like, you may not see it, but the, when I was on the field, he was physically grabbing you and, like, throwing you and demanding you to get here because that's yeah, where well, he needed Because he saw it, hey? He saw it, bro. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? And bro, he he was just the goat in my eyes. That's and cool. That's why I put him at fullback, bro. Like the way that he he structured our defense, the way that he structured our attack, he was just elite, bro. Elite. I wonder. I would assume also that what comes into it with especially yourself. I'm guessing he was a really good dude too. Oh hell yeah! Yeah, like looked after you, just 100%. like hundred percent showed up, like we were saying before, yep. always showed up. And I'm assuming he trained pretty well too, because he right. was always a beast. He he trained. He was one of the hardest trainers. Yeah. It's funny because I don't mean to expose him, but I'm going to bro. <laughs> him and Izzy Falau were the two of the most unfittest blokes in our team. Yeah. So you know you do conditioning, you do MASs and long sprints and that. All right. So they they were at the back. And I was like, man, these guys are the best of the best. How are they at the back? But then when we came into game scenarios and we played offside touch, these guys were miles above anyone else. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. They just had this this um, elite edge on in terms of competitiveness. They yep. just didn't want to lose. And so they would run everywhere and anywhere to get the win. And I was just like, bro. That's nuts. I like that. And that probably makes sense more to how I played my game. One of the boys, I remember, I was playing in Mackay when I was like 20, I think. One of the boys, Tice, he gave me the nickname Tarzan because I train like <laughs> Jane and play like Tarzan. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I was shit in the gym, bro. So unfit. Like yeah. if we're doing like, you know, the 1.5 trials and that sort yeah. of thing or any Broncos and stuff, yeah. I was always last. Yeah. Get me on the field though, I'll play 80 minutes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it yeah. was like this different sort of mindset I yeah. guess that would kick in so it must be that competitive yeah. nature the which competitive nature the adrenaline like yeah. bro I think it's that that fear of letting your teammates down to be honest yep. that's what drove a lot of us mm. you know I always my my biggest fear was walking in the sheds after a game knowing I didn't do my job and that's why I trained the way I did that's why the, I played the way I did yep, yep. Um, and, and people come up to me and they go man you're one of the most consistent Broncos um, ever and I didn't do that for those accolades bro I just did that so I didn't let my teammates down bro that was it <sighs> purely it that's cool and I mean you would you would have achieved everything you wanted to while you were there right like yep. do you ever look back and think oh I wish I had a cunt, like done this or done this but I'm assuming you like you played for your country you played mm. you know everything you could mm. so I'm assuming you're pretty happy with what you achieved oh for sure bro the only the only regret was um you know, not making that tackle on Michael Morgan in 2015 <laughs> and they scored the try on the hooter. Oh. Bro, you know what I does mean? That, like, does that play, does, do people bring that up sometimes? They're like, boy, you remember? Yeah, this? yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, for sure. And literally, I had I had one of our Chiefs boys, Jacko G-Freak, he sent me the clip uh, this morning. Oh. Um, he seen on TikTok of that whole moment because we did a podcast as well and we talked about that moment, bro. And, um, you know, I actually watched it uh, this morning and... Um, I sat in that moment, bro, and I watched myself, and I was like, you know what, I could have gone that little bit harder to get him, to get him, bro. And you know, we all could have. Who knows? I was man. gonna say, like, you know what I mean? It's like you can always think, like we were saying before, hindsight. Mm. Everyone's like, oh, I could have done this, could have done this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was supposed to happen how it happened, bro. Hundred percent. I know you probably don't want to no, hear that, like, bro. Nah, <laughs> legit, like, man. Yeah. Like. Um, I look back on it, bro, and I, I'm still I, I still hate them for it. Mm. Um, but at the same time, my best mate Antonio Winnerstein was a winger for them, and he lost his brother to to suicide that year, the start of the year. So I flew up to Townsville, um, and I was there with him, and I seen how much it broke him, bro. You know, and for them to go and win the GF for his brother, I sit peacefully with that. You know what I mean? I said peacefully. Even though me and Antonio will catch up and I'm like, that should have been my ring. We'll, <laughs> we'll have our banter. We always will. Yeah. But I'm at peace with it because I know he went through all that hardship with his brother. Mm. Um, and I know he did that for his brother. So I sit at peace with it. Damn, that's cool. And it's like, why hold on to grief either? Like, as in like, mm. oh, this, I wish this. Like, in yeah, 100%. Holding on to that anger, that frustration. It's like, it's no going to do right. you no purpose in the, no. in the, in the, in your life moving forward, bro. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this, you look back on it and you go, oh, I could have done that, but is it worth holding yourself back from it? No. Nah. Move on, bro. Mm. Take that lesson, take that learning curve, move on and implement it into the future. Which now, like, going into your future and now what you're doing after footy. Yep. Have you always been a gamer? Always. Yeah, same. Always. From, from a real young, young age, age, bro. Yeah. Like the amount of hours I spent on Nintendo 64, you know, Zelda, yeah. you know, 
you know, looking back at those Sonic the Hedgehog, bro, I I play Street Fighter big time. So I used yeah. to take my 20 cents up to the fish and chip store, sit there and just battle it out from a young age, bro. And yeah, I was always a gamer, man. Always what do you think it was for you? Do you think it was an escape or was it just something you enjoyed? Something I enjoyed, bro. Yeah. I just really enjoyed it. Yep. Um, and then later on in my life, like becoming a professional athlete, it become an escape for me. Because that was somewhere where I could just be myself. I I don't have to worry about it being in the paper the next day. Um, and I could just be present, bro, in the moment. Damn, that's big. Because I know a lot of the boys are gamers. Like a uh, mate of mine, um, Michael Cheekham. Well, yeah, I met yeah, yeah. Manly. Chee loved gaming, bro. Like that's yeah. <laughs> Him and Tyus would be just doing that nonstop. And sure. I remember... Another mate uh, met down there was Starling, Joshy Starling. Yeah. And we would, because I know you do this as well, we'd get on online GTA. Oh, yeah. Fuck. And it was the funniest time. So oh, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like you'd just be on a mountainside just trying to snipe some random dudes and just yep. talking shit. And yep. it was that escape. And you were in, like you said, in this safe space where no one's judging. You're just having fun. For sure, bro. And your actions can't be like, oh, why would you do this? Why yeah, would you yeah, say yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Damn. 100%. And that's why I still do it today. Um, you know, Mrs. probably says I do it too much. Um, but like literally I put so much into my day in terms of my work, um, the the high school kids, my gym, my kids, the family, like I need that escape to to give back to myself. You know yeah. what I mean? To just unwind and relax. And other people relax differently. You know, some people like to sit and binge, you know, Netflix and chill and for me it's gaming, bro. I just love to game, man. Um, and yeah, bro. I, for me, it's it's never gonna go. Like I don't, I don't care how old I get. Um, you know, people might say when I turn forty, you, sh- you need to give it up. I'm not. I'm not because that's that's my safe space. That's where I like to unwind. And I, for me now, that's my competitive edge. Now I play com- Warzone competitively. Um, well, you're, are you with Chiefs? I'm with Chiefs. Yes, yeah, see. I'm with Chiefs, bro. So um, you know, I got a. a pretty bougie setup now and i've never been a pc gamer so you know since i joined chiefs they got me a setup that's just crazy crazy i saw it actually was that a youtube video yeah bro we rock up yeah, it's yeah. like a 10k setup 10k setup bro Oof. it's it's crazy man and yeah. um like i still jam controller on warzone yeah. like i i can't function on keyboard and mouse no, it's so hard bro but um yeah i i love it man and i jump on warzone and we frag out with the boys and then i'll jump into gta rp and um you know we'll just kick it and hang you know with the crew in there bro and it's in a way, it's it's a it's a social network, bro. It's yeah. a way to to catch up with your mates that you don't see. Like I got mates in New Zealand that you know we are we're either in GTRP or we're on Warzone, and we're catching up, touching base while we're fra- fragging out, man. And that's cool. Is that that's rare cool. breed? Rare breed, yeah. yes sir. Familiar, yes sir. Are you, are you Papi Chulo? That's me. <laughs> that's me, brother. So yeah, cool. I, I'm that's one sick. of the um the head honchos of rare breed. Yeah. So um that's our family in in the city and. Um, we just go around. We're a family crew, and we got our own clothing in there. And, That's um, sick. Yeah, bro. Like we we cruise around, and you know, um, SRT like Jeep Cherokees, yeah, bro. Like yeah. you get for people that don't know GTRP, it's like real life in a way. You got every car that's out here in the real world. You got to get a job, like you know. You can be cops and stuff. You hey, can be cops. You can be civs. You can be you know ambulance EMSs, yeah, and right. it's all about role play. So, like, you got to be a character. So, me, Poppy Chulo, like, I don't talk about Alex Glenn, Brisbane Broncos player. They only know me as Poppy Chulo. You know, oh, a lot of them know yeah. me who, for who yeah, I am, yeah. but we don't talk about that in city because it's out of character. That'd be kind of nice because you can it's disconnect so from that, man, because I can't imagine what it's like to be in the spotlight for so many years yeah. and scrutinized for everything you do. Yep. So for you to just escape into this world where it's like you're literally a different person. For sure. That's cool. And I love it, man, because like that, I can escape, bro. Yeah. And like I, I find myself talking to the boys about it and what we've done and what we did last night and all that stuff. And like heaps of people go, bro, you're a nerd. And I'm like, see so it as it is, <laughs> bro. I don't care. I like but that. I, I enjoy it. I like when you put a post up where it was like, um, I'm going to be posting more of this because it's just who I am. Yeah, I, bro. I don't, I don't care, like, oh, who's going sure. to say whatever. Did you cop any shit from anyone that, like, obviously you're going to cop shit, right? I've always yeah. cop shit for being a dork with this stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I used to care. Yeah. And then I was like, <laughs> why? Right, 100%. <laughs> That's what I enjoy. But was there some people who were like, whoa, like, 
Oh yeah, there's there's always people. There's yeah. always there was there was a few people that were sort of laughing and um, cracking up. They're like, bro, your your dad of three kids and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm like, honestly, I don't even care. No, nah. literally, I've I've got pretty thick skin, man. The only time that I really get affected if it was someone that's like really close to me, you know, yeah, um, that that mentions us something. That's where I'll take it on board and I'll be like, you know what, all right. Maybe they're saying this to help me. I can't you know see that I mean? happening with you though because like you're such a good dude from what I've seen and heard and I can't imagine too many people talk shit but then I guess I feel like I'm a pretty good dude and I've had plenty of shit talked about me yeah. so it's always going to happen, right? It happens, bro. Yeah. It happens, man. And at the end of the day, we're not perfect yeah. but we just try and be the best version of ourselves um, and lead through our actions and that's all you can do, man. If it, if it makes you happy, then do it. You know mm. what I mean? Don't do it for anyone else's satisfaction or purpose. Yeah. Like, And that's why I try and say to these kids when I go out and mentor them in high school, it's got nothing to do with footy, what we do. So we teach these kids around um, you know, resilience, well-being, leadership, respect cool, and relationships, yeah. and cultural identity. Because these kids, they're not going to know what they want to do or what they want to achieve if they don't know who they are first and foremost. You know, and we do a lot of kids uh, things with the indigenous and and the Pacifica kids now, and um, that's why I love doing what I'm doing because, like I said to you before, I left high school without knowing what I wanted to do because uh, I didn't know who I was. So I want to pass that knowledge onto these kids so that from year seven, year eight, they can start implementing habits and structures where. Come year 12, mate, they are off. Yeah. They leave high school. They've already got steps implemented on what they want to do, whether it's, um, you know, go to uni or whether it's chasing a footy dream or whatever it is. They've already implemented steps so that when they leave high school, man, the wings are spread and they're able to fly. That'd be fulfilling as, like, how did you get into so that? Good. Was that, that's with Beyond Broncos, yeah? Yep, yep. So um, when I signed my last year, two years contract, I I put a cause in there that um, I'll get a job for five years at the club, and you know the club the club were like, oh, that's a no brainer. Like yeah. we're going to hire you regardless. Um, and so that I I did that so that it could help me transition outside of footy. Because again, when I asked the players what do you do, what was the hardest thing, they said finding a job or transitioning mm. into something that I had purpose. And so I put that in my contract. Um, and then the club gave me free reins to dive into whatever aspect I wanted to. And I said that, like, I didn't want to go down the footy path. I did that my whole career. Um, I want to go into the youth. I want to go into the community and, and, and give back to the next generation so that we can implement change, bro. You know, you, lo- you look at high school kids, their mentors are their peers, right? And whether their peers are bad influences or not, um, if we can try and embed it, some good habitats and some good lifestyle changes and some tools to help them around resilience and well-being and and all that stuff then man we're going to implement their whole life when they leave high school and so that's why i jumped in this 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 area and it's so fulfilling Mm. don't get me wrong it's it's tough as well um because in a way you're 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 kind of like a psychologist as well but i love it i love what i do i love what i do and that's why jumps into my business purpose like that's why I started my gym to get back to my community mm. because for me personally I know um, training really helped me with my mental self um, and it released a lot of endorphins that made me feel good so I hate going to public gyms you know I hate it bro wheel gyms EMFs I hate it because there's so much ego in there you go in there and you train and everyone's looking. No one's trying to empower you to grow. No one's giving you any tips. And I was like, stuff this. I'm going to do my own gym the way that I want to do it. So I don't want to go into any franchises because I don't need someone to tell me how to train. No way. Uh, I don't need someone to teach me how to be a good person and, and give back to my community. So I started my own. And my business partner, Jeremiah, um, we've known each other for over 15 years. And this guy, his his spiritual level and, and what he does for his people, he's been in the industry for over a decade. Um, and our values align like a T. That's cool. You know, and I, I, I spoke to him and I said, if there was someone that should own his own gym, it should be you. And I pretty much had a conversation with him, said that I want to do one. And I think me and you will be an amazing fit for each other. And he goes, let's do it. Let's do it. And so literally we, we sat down, implemented a little structure on what we're going to do. And we just, we had no idea about business, nothing. 
But what helped us, bro, is we had amazing mentors that were CEO of, of big companies in Australia, um, amazing accountant that you know did a lot of amazing things um, in in his profession as well, and we had a lawyer as well that was the best of the best. Perfect. So we surrounded those three people around us to help us get it started, and they're still our mentors to this day. Mm. Um, and to see legacy through movement, you know, become exactly what we wanted to. Th- it's a be in eight months like it's Is a dream come been? true eight months bro damn eight months that's man. when you know something's supposed to happen you know for sure and and literally i got this message from our staff like we got our group chat and we got a mum's group at nine fifteen. so the mums drop the kids off to school they come they get their time self-care time and one of the mums said to you know our, our trainers that were coaching um yesterday she said to her, thank you so much. I want you to let all the staff know thank you so much for creating a space where there is no anxiety. She used, to have, she used to have massive anxiety at other gyms. Where she come here, she felt validated. She felt a part of a team. She felt like um, she could be herself and just, you know, train in a, in a warm, welcoming environment. You know what I mean? And... We got that message this morning. It gave me goosebumps. Gave me goosebumps just then. I can then. see it, yeah. That's because cool. that was our purpose when me and Jerry sat down and we said, what's our gym going to be? That was it. To create a space where we eliminate ego, where we eliminate anxiety and intimidation when you come into a gym, we want this to be a safe space where people of all walks of life, you can be advanced lifters, you can be you know beginners lifters. Um, we want everyone to feel comfortable and to grow and like, bro. bro congrats. Thank That's you, sick. my G. I love that Thank stuff. you, bro. You got to celebrate that because it, it's not common. No way. Like you said, I I was actually studying my cert four for like a couple of years and I just, I got into coaching. So I was like, oh, I don't need that shit anymore. But yeah. during that period, as I was in the gyms and studying, getting to know it, I was like, man, this, this is toxic. Oh, hell yeah. It's man. literally like kids 17, 16 doing steroids now just to want to look like these influencers that For are out sure. there. And, you know, a lot of women, I, I coach a lot of women and they're so intimidated just to go into a gym. So For sure. that just there got me emotional because I was like, the, the women I've wanted to help knowing yeah. how good foundational health is. Yeah. But they're just too scared to go in there. For sure. Fuck, that's huge. Well yeah. done. Oh, thank you, bro. Thank yeah. you, man. And, you know, I got to give credit to my missus, bro, because she was one of them. You know, massive anxiety attacks. Never never been into a gym. <laughs> never been into a gym before. So her gym etiquette and she just sent her off the rails. So, you know, I wanted to create that safe space to help people like my Mrs. Jim. Um, and I know if she's going through it, there's other mums that are also going through it and other people, yeah. you know. So, yeah, it's, it's um, you know, I guess for us, how we did it was – leading through our actions you know so when people came in we embraced them all right we gave them a hug um we welcomed them and then when we do our classes too um we make sure that people go around and introduce themselves to two people they never met oh that's cool because that breaks that barrier down for anyone that's an introvert you're now taking them out of their comfort zone and they have to go and do it Mm. it's it's not a sit down where you got a name three facts about them yeah just go Tell say hello deepest secrets please bro hard out <laughs> hard out it's literally go shake their hands say hello yep. that might break the barrier for the next workout they come now they can be like hey you know what i mean it's so important man like touching on that when we do our retreats or any sort of workshops and stuff because we're working with men mainly yeah and men don't like to share right yeah first thing we get everyone to do what's the worst thing you've ever done right that's like that's hard so when when you say something like that Everyone, you just forget what they even said. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, well, okay, cool. I like this guy because he was open and he was honest. Yeah. And you get to see that it doesn't matter. No one cares like what you do right now. If you have to scream or like during the breath or if you have to cry, whatever. Yeah. It's all good. No judgment. Yeah. So uh, that's what you're doing on a similar level is creating the safe space where they're like, they don't mind if they don't know what they're doing because they know that person that's over on that squat rack. Yeah. They know the owners, right? Like 100%. That's cool. And and like for us, we, this is our philosophy, is to empower others to be the best version of themselves. Mm. So if they come in here to work, like do a workout and that, we let them know, hey, the hardest part is out. You've done it. You've walked there. You wake up early in the morning. You're in the store. 
Now the easy part starts. We're going to have a little bit of fun. If you don't want to do this exercise, sweet. Don't do it because you've already won the day. So like we'll, we'll take them through the training. You know, we'll take them through an exercise. And then it's the feeling that they get when they've done and they can, sorry, I put that on. That feeling that they can, um, a sense of accomplishment. Mm. They're leaving our door. Everyone's like, thanks for that session. Everyone's going at high fives, hugs and that. And they're walking out the door with that sense of purpose. Like, you know what? I won the morning. Now I can go and attack the day. Mm. Nothing can stop me from what I'm going to do in the day. And like, bro, it's the best feeling in the, in the world. As a business owner, like, that's the best feeling. You cannot put money or price on that feeling that you see the fulfillment that our people get, bro. And I love it. I love it, man. It I makes can see me so it in happy, your body bro. when you talk about it, man. That's cool. So it's like knowing the passion translates through into business and the culture you've created. Clearly, also, you've probably mapped a little bit of the culture you experienced during your football time. For sure. Too. For you know, sure. Like that's, that can be brought into so many places. Oh, and yeah. Shout out to Legacy Legacy Movement. Legacy Through Movement. Whereabouts is it? So we're based in um, in Miami, down on the Gold Coast. Yeah, cool. Um, is it close to Jordan's S30? Bro, it's like five minutes up the road. <laughs> of course up it is. Up the road. <laughs> yeah. So literally, um, we're on 54 Paradise Ave in Miami. And um, yeah, come on down. Um, you know, we got, we got a $4 a week trial. Reason why we do it so cheap is because we want people to come and get a feel of what our what our, our community is about. Yeah, cool. Um, and once people feel it, like they don't leave, bro. That's Literally. not in an arrogant way. It's just uh, it's it's not about what they do in the gym. It's about the people they, who they're around. And we spoke about this earlier on. Surrounding yourself with good people, man, makes a hell of a lot difference in your life, bro. Yeah. And so that's what we do. We try and surround people with good people in our gym um, that can empower others to, to grow and be the best version of, of themselves. And we don't want to just be coaching. We want our members and our people to coach others too. Yeah. It's a snowball effect. That's where the power is. Yeah, bro. 100%, the, man. The collective power of just like, I was talking to Wari about it, where uh, group coaching programs for him is where the power is at because it's like, yes, he's helping but he's not taking away their breakthroughs because they're doing it within their own For sure. community. For so that's sure. cool. So Absolutely. now that you've got everything going on, bro, you still do you still keep in contact with a lot of the boys you played with? All the time. Yeah, yeah all the time, yeah. bro. So, um, you know, me, Jordy, um, Adam Blair, and Cody and the Kareem, we keep in touch um, closely, like a lot. Um, but then also the, the players still at the Bronx and that, um, you know, they come through the gym sometimes as well. And, yeah, nice. You know, just let some steam off, just chill. Um, and you know I think for me it's I want to stay surrounded by those players so that I can be that support person for them outside of the circle you know what I mean like when you're inside the circle it's easy to get caught up in a lot of things that's happening at the club uh, or else you know in the footy environment so like to have someone outside the circle to just chat to and and you might need someone to listen bro like I like to be that guy for the boys I like um, that. I've seen a lot in my life. I've done a lot in my life. Um, you know, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life as well. And um, it's for me, it's just, you know, trying to be that mentor for the players and pass on my knowledge to them. How do you think they're going to go this year? I reckon they're going to go good, G. Decent team. <laughs> Bro, Decent we, got, team. we got a good team. We got a good team. Um, and, you know, having um, some strike force come back and Reese Walsh and Jesse Arthurs is going to um, help our, 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 our strike as well. But I think our, our forwards, man, they've, they're all now under, you know, played over 50 games. Mm. So once you play under 50 games, you understand how the game's meant to be played, how to win games. Um, because as a young kid, bro, you're just... You don't know what to do. You just hit the ball up. Whereas our, our forwards have a lot of experience now. Um, and I thought they did really well last year. You know, the last six weeks was, was disappointing. But, you know, I think our boys have learned from that. Um, our coaches have learned from that. And I think it's going to be a good year, bro. Grand final winners? Grand final winners? Oh, for us? Bro, hell yeah. I always yeah. back up boys all yeah, the way. of course, yeah. All the way. Yeah. If I'm to look at who's going to be in the final with them, man, it's hard to say, but... I reckon Sharkies are going to be up there, eh? Mm, Nico's killing it. Nico's going really well. And then Craig Fitzgibbon, their coach, bro, his style of coaching, man, is just, like, it's pretty solid. Yeah. Um, so I reckon they're, they're the out two that's going to be in the final. Would you say he's one of the best coaches in the game right now? Um, hard to say because I've never been under him. Yeah. I've never been under I've never been under Bellamy. But yeah. I rate him highly, bro, because 
Melbourne is always in the finals. Mm. You know, they're, they're always up there in the top four. They've got to be there for a reason, bro. It's not just luck. You know yeah, what I mean? So yeah. I'm interested to see how they go. You know, they lost a few, uh, a lot of strike power, bro. Yeah. You know, three three key starters for their four pack at the Dolphins. Hectic cheese, gone to the Roosters. So. How did he go in his trial game? I didn't get to see it. I didn't see it either. <laughs> yeah, yeah right. I'm not too sure. Yeah, it'll be interesting, man, because there's been a fair few shifts going around. A lot of shifts, bro. Doggies, powerful, powerful team, man, big team. So. Yeah. Tigers as well. They've yeah. recruited well, bro. Yeah. So I think, you know, I'm very excited about the season ahead mm. um, and how teams are going to go, bro. Yeah, it's it. Uh, are you going to be? Are you involved in any way with any of the like media or anything like that? Like, nah. do you ever do any like commentating and stuff like that? Nah, bro. You wouldn't do that. Nah. Yeah. Nah. There's too much politics in it, bro. True, yeah. Too much politics, yeah. man. Like I seen it firsthand with Sonny Bill. You know, yeah. he couldn't be himself on on TV. I'm like, nah, that's not for me. Yeah. If I'm if I'm getting told how to be, you know, a certain person, I don't want a bar of it. No way, bro. That Sonny Bill would be ultimate if i could get him on this podcast one day yeah because get this right this is embarrassing but i'll say it anyway my email when i was younger was sunny billboy at hotmail.com <laughs> fuck when he first came into the league i was like yeah i'm like sunny bill because i had the baby face and everything too yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, real like you'd come on the field had red cheeks and shit yeah then i'll just whack dudes left right and center yeah yeah so yeah. Like, yeah i'm like sunny bill but yeah. that dude's on a whole other level because oh, he's yeah. he's the biggest professional i've ever come across yeah. bro yeah in terms of life and and sports balance, bro. That guy's the goat. Mm. The goat. So um, you're surrounded pe- like people like this, right? Yeah, so for it's sure. Like, it's so cool to know that also you hold yourself there as well because what a lot of people can do is like like we said before, you end up pedestaling people. Yeah. You actually end up putting yourself in a pit because it's like you look at this guy so high, mm. then you actually then unconsciously are putting yourself down here. Mm. When I know you hold yourself highly regarded, which is sick. Like it's yeah, really cool to you, see bro. that because I could only see how you could be in a space like that. Yeah. And I know of one of the words the boys have used before is like when you're in that space, you get uh what is it satellites? Yeah, so like yeah, to hang yeah. around the stars. Yeah, have do you get many people like that over your career that they've tried to come in and like be mates with you because they're like oh, I want to be around the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure, mm. for sure, all the time, man. Yeah, all the time. Um, so you find and it hard to trust. A little bit. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. The thing is, man, you can pick up on a person's characteristics and who they are. Within the first five minutes. 100%. Easily. Within the first five minutes. So you can understand um, these people that come into your life, whether they're there for a purpose or they're there just to just, you know, jump off your status and who you are, mm. you know? So you can you can wean that out pretty quickly. Um, and, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, I've become very good at reading those types of people. Yep. So, you know, I won't surround myself with those people. I'll try and I'll be that nice guy, but you, you're not someone that I'm going to pick the phone up and go, let's go get a coffee. Yep. You know what I mean? I like yeah. that. And you have to, especially in the space. You have to, in. bro. Yep. You have to, man. Um, because at the end of the day, you, you'll come across fans and fans are amazing. I've got always, I've always got time for fans. Um, talk about your career. Because at the end of the day, man, like they, they supported your career. They gave so much um, time and money to come and support you at games and that. You know yeah. what I mean? So I always have time for fans. Um, but it's the ones that just like constantly hitting you up in the DMs. Like, hey, can you support my business? You know what I mean? To try and get growth out of your yeah. leverage, out of your who you are, your status in that. Rather than as a human being. As a human being, just trying to be a good person. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. So, dude, we've nailed this we're already like an hour 20 into this. <laughs> um, I'll do the topics with the tech now. So basically, yep. this is a new segment I brought in where... I know people like to just hear like questions and then an answer. So we'll, yep. it's like a fast, you know, fire through sort of vibe. Uh, if you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice, what would it be and why? Um, if I could give myself Go advice? back in time and give yourself, younger self, one piece of advice, what would it be and why? Not to worry about what others think of you. I think that'd be my biggest one. That was a big thing for you, younger? Big time. Yeah. Especially at school, man. Like, I, I failed English and all that. Reason being, I chose not to do speeches. Mm. I was petrified, bro. And the reason why I didn't do it is because that fear of judgment of what my mates might think of me when I get up there, I start stuttering, I forget, you know, my presentation and all that. Mm. So instead of actually going out there and trying to grow as a person, I just eliminated myself from the whole equation. 
and just try to stay in my cool person, you know, character. Damn, that's big. And then you were getting to a point where you were playing where you were giving speeches to like big crowds and stuff, right? Yeah, bro. How did you end up getting to that point? Just build confidence? Practice. Like you hear everyone say it all the time. Practice what you preach, bro. And the more practice you do it, the better you're going to get. And literally, I got thrown in, because I was a captain in the 20s, I got thrown in front of a media camera. Bro, the worst interview I've ever done. (laughs) The worst. Like, I I can't even watch it, man. It was terrible. Is it still online, is it? I hope not. I I haven't been able to find it, bro. But yeah, that's how I overcome my fears, man. Just do them. Just do it. Yeah, I like that. Uh, How has your cultural background influenced your perspective on life and your career choices? Yeah, I think it's been a huge impact on my life. Um, my culture, so I come from a Cook Islander background and um, family is everything. Um, and, you know, my family was my purpose. My family was my push to why I got to where I am. And then also they embedded the humility in me and the gratitude values, being grateful for what we have um, because I come from nothing. Mm. I come from nothing. We we were, there was four families living in my grandparents' house Um you know, and there was about 16, I think it was. All yeah. of us living in a four, small four-bedroom house. Um, and, it, you know, we lived in a rough neighborhood, but that didn't dictate our career pathways. You know, I didn't look at it as a weakness. I just seen it as, you know what, this is going to give me strength so that, you know, I can raise my kid in a, my kids in a better um, environment and a better neighborhood. Mm. And I use that as fuel, man. And still to this day, I'll always be humble. I'll always be grat- grateful uh, for what I have and what I didn't have. Um, and I'll always have a lot of respect for people. Respect people the way that you want to be treated, bro. Yeah, I, I love your energy because we actually had a um, Cook Islander boy at the retreat that we just went on. Okay. He actually played like real high-level sevens rugby. Um, Sean Fletcher. Nah, I haven't. Yeah, he, he's got a gym down the Goldie too. Okay. So, um, but bro, just that cultural background. Obviously, the ice. Like I, I don't know yeah. the dude, but I've seen him, and just see that he, way he holds himself. Obviously, it's it's that similar sort of feel about it, and that's why I gravitated towards you because I was like, man, I feel like I've met him before. Yeah, because you remind me of um my good mate Ray Ray Brown. Yeah, right. And Ray is one of our facilitators. You, you'll meet him at some point. Yeah, I guarantee. Yeah, cool. he, he owns um. F45 on the Gold Coast. Oh, wicked. Labrador and Surface. Oh, wicked. Bro, powerful Maldi man. Like, awesome. wow. So, yeah, right. Thank you for that answer. Nah, that was all great. Good. Um, if you could switch lives with someone for a day, who would it be and why? Oh, that's a great question, man. Because I could guarantee uh, you've got some people you look up to. Like, you're a big NFL fan, hey? Massive. Bro. Yeah. Massive Giants? Giants, yeah. I'm giant through and through, bro. Um, Through and through. Are you Ravens supporter, Baltimore? Maybe. maybe. I was so Ravens all day until my best mate, Christian Palu, came into my life and he's like, nah, man, Texans, Texans, Texans. So I got into the Texans um, and then we obviously wear shithouse these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But yeah, Ravens, OG, OG Ravens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ray Lewis, bro, the Mm. goat. Yep. Ed yeah, Reed, bro. Ed Reed, just like oh yo, yeah, yeah. But nah, yeah. I've I've been a giant supporter big time. Mm. Um, for bro, over ten years. Yeah, uh, longer than that. Yeah, since two thousand and eight. Um, and we went through some hard times, <laughs> bro. Up until this year, like we we fought back and we made finals finally. But mm. um, if I was if I was someone I could swap lives with, bro, it would probably be uh, OBJ. Mm. Reason I say that is one, um, I'm a huge supporter of him, um, and two, he's gone through a lot of shit in his life too, even to now, like not being drafted, you know, or not being on on the roster. He's he's gone through a lot of criticism. Um, he went through the highs and the lows. So to sit down with and and be in his life and be present and and I guess soak in his journey, bro. I love that shit. Do you think you get to meet him one day? I'd love to, bro. The yeah. closest I ever came to him, me and Jordy Kai were at um, a Drake concert in London, and he was like oh. about fifty meters away, bro, in the VIP section. How's those Drake concerts hit different? Bro, eh? That was the first concert of his that we went to, and still to this day, we both say it was the best concert. Yeah, I'll say the same. I was at his Toronto one three years ago when Migos were there. Yeah, oh, wicked! Wow, that was like. And then he brought out Travis Scott. Wicked, I, I literally cried. I was like, what is happening? Bro, so, Travis Scott's concerts, bro. Like, he talk about energy. That's energy, bro. So energy, I feel it when someone comes in the room. 
the most energy I've felt recently, Denzel Curry came in for Joey Badass. Right. So this is at Fortitude Valley. Yeah. Mrs. and I love rap. So yeah. we're up the top balcony and we're like, and I go, I reckon he's going to bring Denzel tonight because he's here in Australia. And then that oh, song really? comes on. I'm like, fuck, same thing. Just like tearing yeah. up. Like, cause we, I'm all about experiences, man. Hell yeah. So that's why I asked that question. Cause like for me, like I, I would love to meet Gary V one day. Yeah. He yeah. helped, he's helped me so much, bro. Like yeah. when I was in my hole, when I was 26, when I fucked my knee after my fiance left me and stuff. Yeah. Sorry to hear that. Oh man, it, it happened for a reason. Cause like that was my rock bottom. So, uh, that I was like, okay, do I go this way or this way? So yeah. this way I started a clothing brand, got entrepreneurial, started learning about stuff and just watched Gary every day. Yeah. Then I discovered ice and I started watching cause he was like an Aussie, Aussie, Aussie Gary V bro. for me, bro. So I was like, I got to implement more of the Aussie style cause of the way ice was doing it. Yeah. Um, and like, I'd, I'd love to get ice back on. I've had him on the potty, but I, yeah. I full panicked. Hey, like I, I, I ruined the audio shot. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I still remember that, but I'll get him on someday, but it's like, just not pedestaling these people, but just being in the presence of them to just to get some, some words of wisdom and advice, sure. the energy, like the energy exchange. Sure. Like that's what I'm all about. Legit. So Legit. Um, if yeah. there was one more person, bro, um, it would be Kobe. <sighs> Kobe, rest in peace. I kid you not. I was just watching him yesterday. Wow. That followed you. Did you cry when it, when you found out? I didn't cry, but I was pretty heartbroken. Yeah. Eh? Like pretty heartbroken. Um, like I wasn't a Lakers fan, but I was a big fan of him. Mm. Um, and you, I think it really c- kicked into fruition when you seen everyone posting their podcasts and interviews they had with him and the knowledge that he was passing, bro, and the lifestyle and the things that he implemented in his life. It was just like, this guy was unbelievable. Mm. There was no one on his level, bro. I think I felt it energetically hurt so much because I knew that he was here to change the world. And to lose someone like that, like people and can his say, daughter too, bro. Like to to go out with his daughter, yeah. like fuck. Yeah, man. But again, like these things happen, right? Yeah. So yeah, I but mean. it's it's good to like, yeah. Some of the quotes that I've heard him say that have stuck with me. The big one was um, when he said, "Everyone keeps looking at the top of the mountain when you need to just look at the first step," mm. and that still resonates with me today because it's, it's everything I've done with this for sure. I started bro. with nothing, man. Like I was. I just quit Rebel Sport one day and was like, I need to go all in on this. Yep. And I was hustling some weeks, just selling shit on Facebook Marketplace to get by. Because I needed time. I needed the only time, I needed time to say, say like today, bro, like, okay, Lex is only available 10 o'clock on a Thursday. I have time now. Yeah. Back then I didn't, but I had yep. to create it. Yeah. So it was so important for me to grow to be able to say, I need to cater to my guests. Yeah. So it's been a struggle, but I mean, you, you hear people like that say those sort of things. And they ingrain in your brain. You're like, fuck, let's go. Let's show up. So, and that makes you appreciate the journey, right? Well, I'm so grateful for the journey. I still have my ups and downs with it, but I know the the lives I'm impacting with this in, in itself, the coaching I do, um, the retreats we run now. Yeah. So it's it's, been, a two, purpose, it's been two years, bro. Like we created Heart Led Warriors in October last year. Good on you, We've bro. already had two retreats. So that's I know big. that's going to be huge. Yep. We've got our first workshop coming to the Goldie in... What is it? Two months now. Worker, let me know when. If I can make it, I'll come. You know what's crazy? Dane asked me to ask you something. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'll ask you. Yeah. Would you like to be a guest speaker at the first workshop? Love to. Let's do it. Love to. Done. Guys, official. Yeah. Alex Glenn is our first guest speaker for the Heart Led Warriors uh, workshop, yeah. and it's at F45 Labrador. Sweet. Yeah, so yeah. you, could get, you get to meet Ray, like I was saying before. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. To, I appreciate that. Nah, d- like I said, man, for me, it's about, you know, adding value to other people's lives. Yeah. If I can share some wisdom or share something, you know, the the journey through my life, bro, someone might resonate with it. Yeah, that's good. If it gone. helps one person, I know my job's done. Someone you'll really like to meet, and I know you'll meet him now that we've talked about this. Um, I've become mates with um, James O'Connor. Yep. <laughs> Jock's like unbelievably spiritual, bro. Like yep. the conversations we've had have been incredible. He was going to do one as well, but... Time wise, like he's busy as like he's still playing, obviously, and flying all over the place. Yeah. But people like yourself and him and like Geordie, like I'm now seeing that I'm meeting these people for a reason. Yeah. Because I could have asked anyone, um, NRL wise to be like, Hey, do you want to come on a podcast? Mm. 
something about your name though and who you are. Yeah. And then as soon as you came into my reality, yeah. I start hearing from people, oh, bro, like this, this, and this. Yeah. So Thank again, you, it all brother. lines up, right? Thank it's you, cool. bro. I appreciate that, cuz. It's cool. So uh, last couple of questions. Yeah. How do you think advancements in technology will change the way we live our lives in the next 10 years? Sorry, 20 years. Bro, I think it's the way that it's going already, man. Like technology is already making change in our world. We got AI. Mate, we got AI, bro, and I'm like blown away by it. Mm. Like where was that when I was at high school, bro? <laughs> I could have an essay done in two minutes. You Yo, know what I mean? Get this right. My partner's a teacher. And they are literally having to build a whole new software ch- for You'd chat have GPT. To. Have to, bro. Because they can just type in anything and it comes out. Bro, like literally, mate, you you couldn't type in AI, build me a um, you know, uh diet plan going off twenty five thousand calories mm-hmm. or twenty five hundred calories. Boom, it'll come up breakfast, lunch, dinner. And then it'll be like, All right, can you put that into a shopping list? Boom. Shopping list, straight to Coles, Woolies, whatever. Bro, it's nuts. And that's done in a minute. Mm. Like it is crazy. So yeah, I look at technology already, man. It's um, you know, in twenty years, it's it actually scares me to see where we're gonna be at, bro. You got Tesla cars that can drive itself. Yeah. No joke. <laughs> like there was a video that went viral, bro, of a lady asleep on the motorway and her Tesla's just cruising. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, <sighs> it's crazy to think the technology that's out in this world right now scares me that what it's going to be in 20 years. I wonder how it'll help with recovery with athletes and stuff and how big and strong athletes will actually get. For sure. Because I'm sure you can see the, the transition in the power and speed that they've got now. For sure, bro. It's next like, level. Man, I've seen it firsthand, bro. 18-year-olds, 7-year-olds coming into first preseason camp. Bro, squatting 200 kilos, man. You know what I mean? I'm like, Bro, I wasn't even lifting 100 kilos on the bench press yeah. at that age. Like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, and, yeah, bro, it just it just blows my mind at the growth of our, our kids and our youth these days. Um, and that's why I want to monetize it and help them grow even more. Go than, with it, right? Yeah, bro. Don't just like, like oh, this I don't want to. I don't want to cap these kids, man, and just be yep. like, nah, you shouldn't be at this level. Like, I want to try and be there to help them grow even further. Mm. I love that. Uh, last one. What is something you've learned about yourself since finishing football that you didn't know before? That's a great question, bro. Because um, I'm sure you've been tested, man. Like, this is a whole new world for you. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, bro, I want to I take my time with this one because yeah. that's a great question and, and a question that I've never actually asked myself. Um, what's something I learned? Be interesting to see what the unconscious brings up for you. Yeah, bro. Um, one of them definitely is the work that my missus puts into the kids. Like having to do school lunches and all that stuff, like take them to school, school pickups and all that. I love it. But I, didn't, I really underestimated how much work it actually is mm. and how how much, and this is for all the mums out there, how much it mentally drains you. You get to it like if I'm, if I'm at the I have no work and I'll have a day where I'll just do washing, I'll do you know I'm my housewife, bro. I get to bed and I am exhausted. Cooked. You know what I mean? Um, it made me appreciate that, but I think also to, what just um my awareness around patience. I I realized that when I was at footy, I was always constantly working, training, and all that. That. I don't really have acknowledgement around my patience and, and my awareness around it. Mm. Um, whereas now I pick up on it with, I've got three testing kids, bro. Um, I can pick up when I'm at a short fuse and I need to like go and chill for a bit and, uh, and wind myself down um, to a point where I'm like, all right, sweet. I can go back down to it and handle what we're handling. I think that's been the biggest, bro. Mm. Um, learning curve for me is just my patience awareness around my whole life bro it's huge man oh it's crazy yeah. it's crazy um, but yeah do, like and so I think the biggest um, judgment or not judgment my, my biggest challenge outside of being a football player has been juggling work and life balance 
um, and then throwing a business, starting up a business into that, that has by far been the hardest struggle for me. Trying to manage everything um, because at times I was putting all my time and emphasis into my business and then when you do that, you got to sacrifice other things. So I was sacrificing my time with my family, okay, um, or in periods of my life, like I was going, I was traveling away with the Beyond the Broncos a lot. So my business took some sacrifice from that. So trying to find that constant balance and keeping up with three different calendars and trying to sync it in one has been, I, I still haven't managed to comprehend it all, but that's been my biggest challenge by far, Damn. by far. And I'll continue to work as yeah. like any, any anyone um, in the world. We'll always keep learning and, and trying to work towards these things. But yeah, I'm still trying to learn and comprehend all that stuff, bro. It's yeah. a hard juggle, bro. I have to, I'd have to resonate with that. It's it's tough, man. And some days you sit there in the computer chair in the office and you just sit there thinking, fuck, where do I even start today? Bro, legit. And sometimes I'll sit there and I'm just like, I'll punch out some work and I'm just like, fuck, I am like, I don't even know where I'm going to finish today. I've got this to do, i got this to do, and I'll get so overwhelmed that I'll just be like, escape mechanism, war zone. Yeah. You know, just to zone out for an hour. Zone <sighs> out for an hour and then I'm like, yo, sweet, I was with the boys talking banner, sweet, I can refocus again. Let's get back to the checklist. I like that and it's intentional. Some people, some, yeah. some people always say, oh, gaming's so bad. And this is like, well, let's make it so uh, I, I'd set the same thing during the day because I'm constantly doing stuff and I want to spend time with my missus when she gets home from work. It's like intentional time off is actually really cool. And say you work from, I'm up like 5.30 in the morning, 6 in the morning. I'm really creative in the morning. Yeah. Get stuff done by 9, 10. Maybe I'll finish my day by like 11, 11.30, 11 yeah. 12. I'm going to go game for two hours or yeah. go to the beach, do the gym stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I'll come back for the afternoon, spend yeah. some time, and then a little bit of work at night. Yeah, that's what Plan works the for next me. Day. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I like that, and you catered it to yourself. You've got three kids, man. I can't even imagine uh, <laughs> like a, a missus as well, mates, business, like looking after people. So props to you for you know taking on that responsibility too. Oh, because we like people say, how do you do it? Um. And I just say, you just do what you got to do. You just bro. do it. You just yeah. do it, bro. Yeah. Like, you don't worry about how hard it is. You don't worry about, you know, the excuses and that. You just get it done, man. Like, you have to. You have to do it. Can I give you something, though? Yeah. Can you find time during the week to at least pat yourself on the back? I'll try. Yeah. Just be like, sit down for five seconds, ten seconds, and just be like, man, I'm proud of myself for doing this, this, and this this week. Celebrate yourself. That's what we do for all of our men. Yeah. It's like one of the coolest activities we do during the retreat. It's called Pride Rock. Yeah. And I randomly came up with it on one of the days. I was like, all right, boys, write down everything you're proud of in this book and you're going to speak it out in front of everyone and they're all going to celebrate you. Wow. Because we don't, we don't celebrate ourselves. No, we don't. And we get so overwhelmed. Like, what have I done? I need to do more. Yeah. How about you celebrate yourself today and say, cool. you showed up, you showed up today at this potty with a young kid, Oakley, the man, how, how old? Three, ah, uh, two. Two-year-old, two. right? And you've been yeah. able to do a podcast for an hour and a half. Yeah. Like, you did that. Thank you, bro. So, you celebrate that. It could be a small win, could be a big win. Um, but I yeah. find anyone listening, if you just celebrate yourself more often, it reduces the overwhelm, you don't get as stressed, and you actually build your self-confidence up. So, what a put tip, that on bro. you. There you go. What a tip, G. <laughs> I've, I've never heard that one before, man. Mm. Um, and... Yeah, man. While you're saying that, that just really hit home, bro. Really hit home. You're realizing what you achieve, hey? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, and I never give myself credit. Like, I don't look for it. Just do what I got to do, you know what I mean? And that really puts things into perspective. You, know? you watch, if you really think about what you've achieved in the last year or so in the way home in the car, I guarantee you you'll break down in tears. Because you don't, something in you deeper. Yeah. It was like, fuck, finally you're celebrating us. Yeah. You're finally giving yourself permission to speak and feel what you've actually achieved. Not yeah. Not just like look at it and be like, oh, I've got more to do. I've got more yeah. to do. Because yeah. that's, and that, again, that comes from football player mindset too. Because it's like some players grew up having coaches or dads that were like, you have a sick game. And they're like, yeah, yeah. Still oh, hard you, you on miss, you, Yeah, you, you missed that tackle, mate. Yeah. Dad, I scored five tries. Like, yeah, yeah you can be better. Yeah. Just fuck. focusing on the negative. Literally. Things that you didn't achieve, you know. Yeah, so I mean? we can be programmed to do that. And yep. society too. You know, sure. like you could have a sick game 
I'm sure there's fans that are like, oh, Alex only ran for 250 Yeah, yeah, meters. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. What? Yeah. 100%. So in in your so consciously you're aware of it, but it's the unconscious that get pro, gets programmed. Yeah. And I tell everyone, man, it's like, oh, you I've used this analogy so many times, but it hits every time. Your conscious is the little ant that's heading north. Yeah. Trying to achieve all these things and trying to yeah. say, oh, I'm doing this, this, and this. Yeah. But you're walking on the back of an elephant that's heading south. Right. That's your unconscious. Right. So it's being programmed to believe all this, even though you want to believe this. So it's yeah, just keeping yeah, that in yeah. mind. It's like that's cool. Yeah, so that you is cool. Talk to it more often, and that's yeah. journaling's big, yeah. man. Meditation, journaling, all the stuff yeah. no men like to do. Yeah, that's what's changed my life and the men that I work with too. Yeah. So, bro, one thing from me, like how how because I I'm not a journaler. Yeah. So my meditation, for me, I can't sit in peace, bro. My meditation is like I put music on, and like I work out. Like that's my meditation. That's my my place where I think about a lot. Um, but I've never been one for journaling. Um, I don't know. I've I don't know. How, it's not. I don't know how to do it. I just yeah. I've just never been able to do it. Hey, what if you did like a audio or something on your phone? And then what do I talk about? Just the day you watch. Whatever you watch, you'll start talking, and things that you've never thought of will start coming out. Right. Literally. So this is this is a big thing. Is where, this something you sit with yourself and do it? Yep. Yep. So many men wish death upon no, me. I'm so, literally <laughs> about to say the same thing. Um, so a lot of men will no, no. disconnect from their emotions and their heart. So they'll get in their head. So they're always overthinking. Yeah. Because if they've had traumas and stuff in their life, to avoid that, they disconnect. Right. So to feel things, to feel everything, that's when you're connected to unconscious. So this is when you start to connect to things you haven't solved, which I know this is a personal thing, but there could be some stuff around your mom. Yeah. So holding on to that resentment or the the disconnect there, Mm. there's something in your heart that's still struggling with that. And you don't know, you're you're trying to figure out one day where you're like, why do I feel so shit today? Yeah. It's because that may have come, it bubbled up a little bit because you heard a a song or smelt a smell or someone said a word and it it, it goes, your unconscious goes, Whoa, I remember that when mum said that. I just got goosebumps saying yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I've only just had a realisation myself recently with some stuff that's come up. Yeah. And it's all unconscious. It's the shadows. So, uh, you got the bright side of the coin, you got the shadow side of the coin. Right. And what the society sees and what you see every day is the bright side. Yeah. But there's little things in behind there, like yep. what I talked about where when there's something unsafe, he, he goes to sleep. Yeah. Because that's what he's child version of him used to do yep yep so it plays out today yeah yeah Yeah. so little things like that man i can't even imagine some of the things that you've had to go through during your career yeah so i could only imagine there's some stuff still sitting there yeah and i only talk about this to you in front of people so that any men listening for someone like alex there could still be stuff there that you can sort out just by doing like little things like that yeah so it could help out a bit yeah it's wicked bro and i i asked that question because literally i I don't know how to do it. Yeah, not ma- not many um, people do. You put it that way. Hey, yeah, it's we're okay. Back to go get it then. Go get it. Go get it. Okay. Yeah, I'll finish up with Dad now. That's all right. We're nearly done. Go get. Go get it. He's done so well, man. Bro, he actually 40. surprised me. He yeah. actually surprised me. Well, that's probably our right, sign. Go get it. Where can anyone find you online? It's Alex Glenn, obviously, at Instagram. Yeah. Legacy through movement was yeah, there. Yeah, so Alex Lynn on Instagram and then our, our Instagram page is Legacy Through Movement, yep. all one word. Um, and then obviously on Twitch as well, I stream a bit. Yes, so Alex Glenn underscore. Yep. Um, and that's about it, bro. Easy, brother. Thank you so much for today. This was gun. I appreciate it so My much. Absolute pleasure, brother. Um, and thank you for listening, guys. Another episode done. We'll let Oakley get out of here. Hey, <laughs> Oakley signing us off. Let's go. <laughs>